Sustainable fashion is in and carbon emissions are out. Adidas's Ricky Ruff is tackling one of the fashion industry's biggest challenges, decarbonization, through his Global Nuclear Concepts Initiative. Ricky joins me today for a conversation at FIOLA. I'm Monica Trousey. This is Off the Menu. Ricky, hi, how are you? Monica, how are you? I'm good, welcome to Washington. Thank you so much, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for joining me, let's head back to the table. Ricky, thank you so much for joining me for lunch today. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure to be here with you. You have been in the fashion industry, an industry that's very uh, near and dear to my heart for your entire career. And you've also um, taken on a passion for zero carbon energy. Um, If you had to rate the fashion industry right now on how it's doing on sustainability, which we hear a lot about, how would you rate the industry? I'm very impressed with some of the things that I'm seeing, and I'm also impressed with the consumer, right? This idea that it's now a demand and now almost a requirement for consumers to have visibility into how uh, what they're purchasing is being produced and and why, and uh, just to have that uh, sort of demand on behalf of the industry has been uh, incredibly uh, positive and refreshing to see. I'm proud of the industry overall for taking this seriously, But I also want to be very serious about the fact that I think there's an incredible space, an incredible opportunity that is not being addressed at all that I would love to attack. And that's been the the crux of my passion project so far. So you see this sort of need within the industry to decarbonize, to um, create more sustainable manufacturing processes. Um, so there's sort of the, the problem, right? And right. somehow you get to nuclear energy as the solution, which is not always the, the sort of top of mind answer for, um, for everyone. I am so curious to understand kind of how you got there um, and what it is about nuclear energy that excites you so much as the solution. Well, my master's thesis was about uh, nuclear energy, right? I just came across it. The perception overall, especially in North America, especially in the United States, is that it has this legacy and this history of being unsafe or being somehow uh, not aligned with the goals of society. And there was a whole mismatch with the branding, a whole mismatch yeah. in terms of how it's perceived by the average person. And for me, that was just such a, a, a sad misconception, but a great opportunity. And then if we look at the yields, obviously, and if we look at um, things like energy security, yeah. and if we look at how it can really transform our world for mm-hmm. what we need in the future, It just became such an elegant solution and such a great idea that I decided to just dive more into. So really, to answer your question, to get back to it, uh, this idea of merging my career path with this new technology that I'm just so impressed and so curious with, I just saw a huge opportunity. And so it was like a project, a passion project, that's evolved into a company, Global Nuclear Concepts. What's a real life example of how nuclear might plug in to a fashion manufacturing process? At the moment, factories are using oil and coal and gas to support their energy needs for manufacturing. It's energy intensive. So the goal is to be able to utilize a micro reactor and on site at a facility to really provide all of their energy needs. And not only will it provide the needs for manufacturing, but it would also provide some peripheral energy for the communities that then spring up around these factories. So it's hitting some ideas about, you know, overall health of the human population and really putting energy at the center of what these factory communities really need. And in developing countries especially, where many things are manufactured. And you have a case study that you did in Nepal um, with cashmere uh, manufacturing. Talk a little bit about that and how you see nuclear playing in there. I got a chance to spend some amazing time in Nepal. And first of all, the people there, amazing, amazing, amazing. Some of the most pure hearts, some of the most amazing, peaceful people that you'll ever meet on the planet. So Mm -hmm. I fell in love with Nepal for that reason. But they're, in a lot of ways, energy insecure, especially if we look at some of the communities on the periphery of society, right? So let's just take it back to fashion as well for a second. So if we think about cashmere and the highest caliber, highest quality, finest cashmere in the world, we're talking like 12 microns of cashmere. It's only available in certain regions of the world. Mount Everest, the Himalayas, Nepal being prime among Mm -hmm. those regions. So first of all, we have a community that can produce this cashmere, but ironically at the same time is energy insecure. So 
first of all, to be able to provide them with energy, with a reactor, a micro-reactor, that number one, leaves a lot of the actual, um, you know, face of the planet untouched, leaves a lot of that natural beauty untouched, leaves a lot of what they would consider the most beautiful uh, landscapes and terroir in the world untouched. That's what a micro-reactor could provide there. Mm -hmm. But also, these communities without energy really don't have anything. So again, it's so ironic that companies in Italy, in Paris, I'll be visiting later this year and also next year, to help them participate in the global market and participate in the global economy to really get their product to where it needs yeah. to be and allow them to participate, again, on that scale of the finest fashion companies, but also providing them at the same time with a pure, clean, zero carbon energy source. That is really the idea and concept around the work that I'm doing in Nepal. Right. And a company who is getting their cashmere from that manufacturing um, will be able to say that um, that the production is, is zero carbon. That is correct. So you launch Global Nuclear Concepts and, um, and you are planning to sort of take it on the road to fashion weeks um, around the globe. Uh, tell me a little bit about what we can expect to see at Fashion Week and what the goal is of what you'll be trying to do um, at, at Fashion Week. I'm actually focused on New York, Paris, Milan, London, mm -hmm. and at Fashion Week, I would like to, the goal is to, if I could just walk you through the concept, is to have a pop-up museum at Fashion Week that highlights everything that's great about nuclear and really shows how we're going to incorporate that into fashion. So the solution would be to decarbonize manufacturing in the fashion industry through the supply chain, through displacing oil and coal and gas at factories. That's really the, really the goal here. Uh, but I need to communicate that story in a way that's palatable for the public, in a way that's exciting, in a way that helps to rebrand how nuclear is actually perceived in the minds of Americans, North Americans, global citizens around the yeah. world. Well, I'm really excited to see where that all goes. Um, and thank you so much for joining me for lunch today. Uh, thank you for coming into town. I know you had to fly uh, quite a way to, um, to have lunch together, so I really appreciate it. Amazing. Thank you so much for having me. This has been really great to talk to you. Thank you.